Well, let's uh, put our hands together for you. Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, I have a few announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're a visitor today, if you could just raise your hand. Hi. What is your name? What? Leah. Leah, very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew. Excellent. It's great to have you guys with us today. Uh, Two quick announcements, and I'll put it up to others that have my cap announcements. Uh, next week, uh, Pastor Claire will be last week with us. And, you know, I have to say, a supply uh, pastor, you are not. You have been. Uh, bringing us so many wonderful variations of a strong, strong sermon every, every Sunday. Uh, the time you put in, we really appreciate it, and we want to honor you after uh, service next week. So, um, the second announcement is uh, kind of an exciting one as well. We now have, we're waiting on the Father, and we're still uh, Tim and I were able to, okay, here he is. Uh, the, the Son and the Holy Spirit are out back there. Uh, the Father will go in the middle next week. Uh, our garden ministries is going to rock and roll. And there are so many people that stop by from the neighborhood. It's just really fun to have. So if, if you have a green thumb or a brown thumb, meaning you do a lot of the grunt work and want to help out, uh, get in touch with Caleb or myself and uh, we can put you to work. Okay, welcome to... So while I was still on the gardening topic, uh, I was listening to a podcast this week, uh, Denver, a couple of Denver gardening ladies, and they said, you know, we hear people say, well, oh, I have a brown thumb, I can't grow anything. So if, if you're killing things, you're gardening. Gardening is not just growing things, but it's also killing things and learning in the process. So as a community, this garden is for us. This is not something that I want to come every day and take care of and maintain. This is not Caleb's garden. This is our Savior's garden. So I'm going to turn this mic down in a minute as well. Um, so what can you do? You can bring in eggshells, you can bring in coffee grounds, you can bring in extra potting soil that you may have. All of those things are things that we can use in the garden plots. So we're gonna have three, three of them, some vegetables, some flowers. The main thing that we wanna do with these garden plots is not just to create plants, it's to engage the community, it's to meet our neighbors, it's to talk to people around us, if there's anything that Denverites love, it's gardening. And so I think it's something that we can really use and utilize to, to meet our neighborhood and um, use as an outreach. That being said, um, bring your coffee grounds, bring your eggs, your eggshells, and um, we're gonna, even if you have extra plants in your yard, extra perennials, little seedlings that are coming up, we're gonna put them to use, okay? So, um, this is for all of us, and uh, thank you all for being here. Well, I have some exciting news. Um, the council has okayed us to move forward on an art collective contract for the West Tower. Good morning. 
I'm dealing with allergies today, so if I sound a little croupy or croaky, that's why. Um, so I, in the spirit of celebration, as we're selling all these, sharing all these good things, I wanted to share something that was, I felt a God moment, at least for me, um, last Sunday. If you were here, you um, met maybe uh, the two um, friends of mine who joined us for worship. They live out in Washington State. But I went to seminary with Joe 40 years ago, and he and I lived in the Denver House of Studies together for a year um, right across the street. So he made all that long journey to show his wife, who had never seen where he spent a year. It was a formational year for both of us. And the God part, besides that, was that afterwards, there was two people that joined us for the first time. They had lived across the street in the Denver house, which is now apartments, individual apartments. And they had been hearing our music for um, a long time and decided to visit us for the first time. They lived there for a year and a half. So they were sitting over here after in the fellowship time, they met um, Thor who, you know, Joe and I were in Thor's father's class in Warper. And then they said, well, we happen to live across the street where you lived 40 years ago. And I said, well, I'd love to see the inside of it, hint, hint. And they said, would you like to come in and see it? And I went, oh, yes. So Joe and I were just ecstatic, like kids in a candy shop, right, to go back into the house that we lived in. Just so happened out of nine apartments that those that couple lived in the apartment that I lived in 40 years ago. So I got to see where I lived and reminisce and we exchanged information and we're gonna stay in touch. So isn't that cool? Thank you, God. So that was very cool. The other thing I wanna share with you, besides the steel drum, which we've been playing at the end of our prayers, tones that I got at a place called Rituals over in you know, you know, Wash Park, I got this wonderful thing. It's, it's addicting for me to go in there because every time I go in there, I come out with something new. And these are called tinctures. And so this is what I played last Sunday um, at a different part of the service. And we're gonna play it again in just a minute to calm our hearts and minds for worship. And this is what they sound like. So it's just kind of a gathering tone. So let us begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. 
Please join in our gathering hand. Be not dismayed, whatever we told. This is not in your hymn book. This is only in your bulletin. Um, you know, we're in a time of change, so it is okay to do things a little different. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, some of you recognize this song.
die to teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your spirit, we may know goodness and peace through you.
Mary's heart. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and board the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the print of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Earlier in my ministry, I served as a chaplain at Hazleton, a drug and alcohol treatment center in Center City, Minnesota. I worked with hundreds of alcoholics and addicts in the 11 years that I worked there. But there were a few of them that stand out in my ministry and in my memory. One of the patients I worked with, we'll call him Bob, which was not his real name, came to me within three different times for the 28-day program. After the first treatment, he was sober for six months, and then he relapsed and lost his job. He came back to Hazelden for a second treatment, was sober for a little over a year, then relapsed again. After this relapse, he asked his wife asked him for a divorce. When Bob came back the third time for treatment, he was depressed and full of guilt and shame. During the course of this treatment, we talked several times about his feelings and explored the patterns that were keeping him stuck and getting in the way of his lasting recovery. I asked him about his spiritual connection with God. And sheepishly, he said that in the previous two treatments, he had kind of gone through the motions with the God part of the program, completing his assignments, but not really feeling connected to God. I asked him if he wanted to do it differently this time. And with tears in his eyes, he said, yes, I really want to do it differently. I can't do this by myself. I need God in my life. Bob asked me for guidance. So I asked Bob to carve out some quiet time with himself and with God every day. Whether it was 10 minutes or 30 minutes, it didn't matter. And I told him to intentionally spend that time doing whatever he felt would be helpful in helping him be close to God whether that was walking in the woods, praying, or swimming in the pool, it didn't matter. It just needed to be intentional time alone. I asked him to write down his experiences and talk with me later. So I'll come back to the story after I talk about a few other things. In today's gospel lesson, the disciples gather around Jesus and report to him all they had done and taught that day. It was almost as if they were coming home to Jesus, maybe like a child would come home to a parent after school and show them his report card so that the disciples could show Jesus what they had did and Jesus could be proud of them. In the midst of this, we read, many were coming and going and the disciples had no leisure even to eat. We assume from this that the people around him were asking for the disciples' help and attention and keeping the disciples from tending to their own needs. Note that it says they had no leisure. 
meaning that they were not even able to relax and have a meal together. Then listen to what Jesus says to the disciples. He doesn't say, well, you can eat later. There are people here right now who need you. Help them first and then tend to your needs after that. No, instead, he says to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and rest. What? Jesus is telling his disciples to rest and spend quiet time with him first before they take care of the people that are right there in front of him needing their help? Yes, that's exactly what he is inviting them to do. So they go away with Jesus by themselves in a quiet boat to rest and renew their strength. The text doesn't tell us how long they rested in the boat, but when they came to the other side, the crowds were there to meet them, descending on them, bringing their sick to Jesus, asking for his help. So when Jesus gets out of the boat and sees the crowds coming toward him, the text says he has compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Remember last week's lessons that focused on Jesus as our great shepherd? I mentioned then that sheep have very poor eyesight and how easy it is for them to stray away and get lost. Well, in today's text, Jesus is comparing the people he sees coming toward him to sheep who have no shepherd. They must have looked pretty lost and in need of direction. He then begins to offer them direction and healing, and he started healing their sick. He becomes their shepherd. Well, as I read this text, what's in interesting to me is how the events happened, the order in which they happened. The disciples come to Jesus to report all they had done with the people, and the people are still coming to them needing help. Jesus recognizes the disciples need to relax and rest first, and he invites them to come away with him to a quiet place. So then they rest in the boat, and when they get out on the other side, the people come again. But now, Jesus and his disciples have been renewed, and their energy and strength has been restored, and so they can feel compassion once again, and tend to the people's needs. As you hear this gospel lesson, who do you relate to most? Do you feel like one of the disciples who are so busy tending to other people's needs that you don't have time to relax and rejuvenate and meet your own needs? Or do you feel like one of the crowd who's like a sheep without a shepherd, wandering around a bit lost, asking for help? Or maybe you identify with both of them in some ways. Well, wherever you are at today, Jesus, our Good Shepherd, comes to all of us today and says, Come away with me by yourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. <clears throat> well, I texted Caleb earlier this week and told him the theme for my sermon today. So he could pick that hymns to match the theme, which I thought he did an excellent job. And he texted me back a picture of the stained glass window that's in front of me. And he said it's zoomed in on the top inscription to see what it said, because he said it fits with your sermon. Do you know what it says? Can you read it? It's from Matthew 11, 28. It says in the King James Version, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah, read it with me. Let's say that again. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So wonderful to see those words in your stay blessed window every week. If you read further in this passage, it also says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest 
for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you hear the word that Jesus keeps coming back to over and over again in these scriptures? What is the word? It's an R word. Yes. Rest. rest. Our Old Testament today talks about Sabbath rest. The fourth of the Tenth Commandment is, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We sometimes forget that keeping the Sabbath is not just a lifestyle suggestion, it's a commandment. Just as important as not stealing, killing, or lying. But this commandment was not meant to be oppressive or legalistic either. It's meant to give life and to bring joy and refreshment so that we might be strengthened to do God's work in the world. And that doesn't just mean taking time off on Sundays. It means keeping the spirit of the Sabbath in our hearts every day. It means slowing down in our minds and in our activity enough to get into the boat with Christ and rest with him. It means letting go of trying to fix, save, manage, rescue, and control other things and other people and turning them over to God. It means trusting God and that God is in control so we don't have to be. There are many wonderful recovery slogans that relate to our theme today. One of them is Easy Desert. I have to remember that one over and over again. Another and my personal favorite is let go and let God. I use this phrase as a mantra when I get stressed and anxious. And I breathe out, as I said, let go, letting go of fear and worry and anxiety. And I breathe in, as I say, let God. And I picture turning things over to God and resting in Him. One thing you probably don't know about me is besides doing um, church things like this, I also teach Tai Chi and Qigong, which are movement meditations from China that are now done all over the world. I've taught Qigong for about 30 years, and I've done it um, to originally help my chronic back pain, and it just helps calm me and center me and helps me rest in God. So sometimes I put recovery slogans or other uh, phrases um, to the movement, and it helps me embody the movement. So I'll show you what I do with this one. I, this is a movement called rocking motion. It's just your hands are up and then down and you're rocking, kind of like the gentle waves at the beach. And I'll take a breath in here, and then I'll say to myself, let go, let go. Um, you want to stand up? You can, but God. <laughs> let go as you exhale. So think about what you want to let go of today and let it go. Think of bringing God's peace, love, and rest into your heart as you remember the Sunday. Take that breath. Exhale as you let go. Inhale as you let go. Have a seat. And I'm going to just lead you in a very short guided meditation to help us rest together. And picture yourself in a quiet outdoor space. It may be a place you've been before or a place that you now create in your mind. A beautiful, peaceful, serene place out in nature. Feeling the breeze on your face, the grass on your feet. This is a place that you can be completely. 
completely yourself, completely at peace. You can sit or lay down in this place, in a place of beauty and rest and peace. Notice your surroundings, God's creation all around you. Breathe it in. Relaxing completely and fully. Being completely in the present moment. Into this place, you now notice. Jesus walking towards you, full of peace and grace and love. He comes and joins you, sits beside you or lays beside you. And so if you wish, you can tell him what's on your heart and mind today. What might be burdening you or what you might be struggling with. He's here to listen. Now listen to what he has to say to you. Surrounds you in this beautiful place. Feel your body and soul at rest in his presence. So let's come back to the story I told you earlier about God. After spending quiet time alone with God every day for 
for 28 days. Bob and I had a final talk before he went home. He told me that this daily practice of being alone with himself and with God was transformational for him. He said he had gotten in touch with how addicted he had become to busyness and to his electronic devices like his cell phone, his laptop, and his TV. He realized that he had avoided being alone because he was running away from himself and from God, burdened by so much guilt and shame. He started small with just five minutes of intentional alone time. And the more he spent time with himself and with God, he said he actually started to forgive himself and love himself again. He told me he experienced the depth of God's love for him for the first time in his life because he stopped long enough to actually feel it. He told me that he would carry this practice of slowing down and spending time with God in his recovery with him. About eight years later, I received an email from Bob thanking me for our time together while he was in treatment. He told me with pride that he had just celebrated eight years in a row of sobriety and told me he was still taking time to be alone with himself and with God every day. Jesus invites all of us today to rest in him, to lay down our head burdens at his feet, whatever they are, to give permission to ourselves to take a break, to let go of our worry and control, to take time to renew ourselves and take care of our own needs, so that, just like the disciples and Jesus, we will have the energy and strength to care for God's people once again. I created a handout that has a variety of meditation and prayer practices on it that I use for myself and that I teach on a regular basis as tangible ways of resting in God. They are at the back of the sanctuary in um, a pile near the door, and um, there will be someone to hand them out to you if you would like to take one at the end of worship today. On this Sabbath day, I invite you to take a deep breath, slow down, and know that whatever you are experiencing in your life today, you are not alone. Trust and let go. And then, climb into God's lap and rest. Let's pray. Oh God, our good shepherd, when we feel lost and alone, help us to find our way to you. When we feel burdened by problems that are hard to solve, help us to turn them all over to you. When we are weary from helping everyone else and not tending to our own needs, help us to come away with you to a quiet place and rest a while. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing Thy Holy Names, number 
Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudice or desire, as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experienced despair and great need. God in your mercy.
grace of the Lord to everyone online. I don't know if you can hear me. It's probably John and Christian Ross. There's a few people. I will miss the passing of the peace of our Savior. <laughs> so wonderful. So as always, I'd like to thank you for the many gifts that you give to this congregation to help sustain it. And so we have offering plates in the back of the congregation if you would like to offer a gift. Thank you again for your generosity. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb and feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up your hearts. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Holy, holy. Do this as often as you drink of it for the 
really not going to stop me. For as, we, as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. So for our Lord's Prayer, we're going to do what we've been doing the last several weeks. Um, I'm going to be singing the first um, part of the prayer, and then you respond and just repeat after me, and Caleb will lead you. Uh, <clears throat> I got allergies, remember, so I have a worldly <laughs> voice, so pray for me right now. <laughs>
give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, for hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you rest and peace. Amen. Amen. In six eleven. <laughs>
Let's, 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 let's,